Hey guys, how's it going? We're doing something super cool today. We're doing this stuff, which is a Y-Swap trailing arm, which is the same for the E36 and the E46. It completely replaces the trailing arm. We got a lot of questions about them, so we're gonna show you guys exactly how all that stuff works. So as you can see, there are a couple differences with the original setup. There's a spherical over here that has two positions and we run a bolt-in wheel bearing from an E65 or E63 BMW 7 or 6 series. Here you can see that there's two positions for the anti-squat setting. You basically flip around that silver part that has a spherical in it and that changes your anti-squat curve. And the plates below that have the easy quick adjuster for the toe of the rear of the car. So let's have a look at the contents of the box. Obviously you get two trailing arms which already have the sphericals installed. And as you can see, it has dual caliper brackets. So that's super easy. It's a lot stronger than stock. And that's how you bolt in that grip setting. You will need to get seven series or six series wheel bearings. We'll provide you with all the part numbers and stuff for that and obviously the hubs that have the splines for the axles and um, will take your wheel bolts. This is the part number for the bearing that we used and as with every YSWAP kit it comes with very clear instructions and people who buy from me are of course also added to the YSWAP info group on Facebook. Yeah you can see those grip settings. If you run the max grip setting you have to cut out something and we'll show you exactly how that works for the assembly of the hubs and the wheel bearings a good trick is to put the hub into the freezer um, so it shrinks a little bit and leave that overnight and then it goes into the wheel bearing very very easily and you end up with a unit like that one important thing is that you need to remove the washers from the bolts that come with the wheel bearings because otherwise they don't go into the assembly it's not enough room over there because we make the piece as strong as possible so remove those washers the bolts that come with the wheel bearings always need to be replaced when you take them out and you set them to 110 newton meters or 81 foot pound and you do that in a crisscross pattern so it sits nicely so these are designed to work with the strongest bmw oem axles which are the m3 axles as you can see over here we're using our own einzel axle which is a little bit different design. There was some interference with a certain BMW OEM axle before, but that has been solved right now. So you can run any BMW M3 or any large spline BMW axle in this hub, no problem. Of course, also the Wise Fab axles will fit. If you have any questions about this kit, obviously about the axles or about which calipers or rotors to run, obviously send us an email or comment below and let me know what your question is. And then you're all done with the hub and bearing assembly. In order to install the grip setting on the car, you need to remove the little dome that's inside the body. You cut it over there. You can use a Dremel kind of tool or um, an angle grinder. Once you've cut it in, you squeeze it a little bit with a big pair of pliers. Basically, you're going to make sure that it can come through that hole and mess around with it a little bit and it will come right out the reason why we're doing this is because you want to be able to run this grip setting if you run it in the original fd legal position you don't have to do this but as you can see that spherical over there sits further to the back and that's what requires that pocket to be cut out of course the quick adjuster for the toe is what everybody talks about because the spherical is a lot more compact it gives a lot more movement over there so you have way more reach in the toe of the car with a number 10 allen male um, we prefer to use a ball head you can adjust it really quickly and really accurately it's a little bit more difficult to see when there's no wheel or no rotor on there but you can definitely see that are moving so super nice over there especially because these e36 e46 chassis you really make them fly if you tow them in but sometimes it can be a little bit too much so you want to be able to adjust it pretty easily and look how nice that works 
Another major advantage of this trailing arm is the reinforced shock mount, which you can see over here. And these are starting to fail sadly on these cars because these trailing arms are getting old and they're starting to have a hard life. So this is much stronger, especially if you want to run a full coil, obviously, which gives you a lot more room for axles and maintenance. There's no real technical advantage to a full coil, but the packaging just is a lot nicer. You can also run these V2 arms, will give you even more room. As you can see, this is all very, very easy to work on. It's very accessible to get to your shafts if something would happen. In this case, we run Einzel shafts. Our own brand is on this car and we cut out a part of the body, obviously, because this is a full pro car, which has a lot of suspension travel. But you can run this on a full stock body car as well. That's no problem. You can also run it with the divorce setup, but you need to notch the original upper control arm a little bit. We really like running it with the upside down fuel coil over, obviously. Super nice setup there. And what's really nice is that everything is brand new. So you're not messing around with 2001 uh, parts. And of course, it's very nice to have this quick adjuster and a little bit more range on the toe. Um, you can really make a big difference with the anti-squat, like the drivers that run the anti-squat setting on maximum grip say it's a completely different car that's where you adjust the toe really quickly and it has the nice teeth and indicators for that so you know what you're doing and with this setup you're also realizing the most travel that you'll ever need on this chassis like this is so overkill if you know anything about e46s you know that if the wheel bearing sits on the skirt level that's already super high this is as high as you'll ever need to go like a 265 will hit the highest part of the inner fender this way there's absolutely no need for this much travel but you can do it you can really um, lower the car very far and have a lot of bump travel this is with the v2 obviously and like i said before we cut something out of the body here where the spring normally sits but this is really is a crazy crazy bump travel and this is really why these trailing arm cars are so good. If we move the suspension all the way through the motion, all the way up and all the way down, there's really very, very little camber gain. And this is way more travel than you're ever going to be using. This is basically the physical travel that no shock could even um, keep up with. So if you take a look at the degrees of camber over here, there's almost no change. Like this is about as good as it gets with any car. And keep in mind that this is with a huge amount of uh, bump travel so really good over there Thank you guys so much for watching and of course hit me up with all your orders. I really appreciate it. Any questions, post them below.